Hi! I thought I would show you the current version of the X-Solder, X-Solder 3, and a little bit about its capabilities, features, and some of the settings that you can do. This would be the two X-Solder versions, the X-Solder station version, where the X-Solder is inside this custom enclosure, coupled with an original JVC stand, like this. Where this would be the X-Solder portable, it's the same X-Solder PCB, just in a smaller enclosure and much more compact. Um, this is probably the one I would use if I would ever leave my bench and have to go somewhere and bring the soldering iron with me. This is also the one I would power with USB power delivery if I'm out. On my bench, I use the X solar station and I power it with a DC power source. In this case, it's the Meanwell LRS 15024, which is a 150 watt, 24 volt power supply. And this power supply provides positive and negative 24 volt. And I also have mains protective earth connected via this green connector. And by having mains protective earth connected, I can make sure that the tip of the soldering iron is connected to mains earth. It has the same potential. And that is possible if you have a power supply that is a salve version, meaning that the outputs are floating. There could not be any um, continuity between the negative output and the ground. So it has to be floating. And this power supply has a floating output. And if you have a floating output, you can connect mains protective earth. And by doing that, you will have continuity between the tip of your soldering iron. And now I will probe the mains protective earth in my outlet. And there is continuity, which is really nice, especially if you're soldering on sensitive electronics. And uh, in this case, my table also has the same potential as mains protective earth. And to start X solder, you switch on the power. And it should also be said that you can power X solder without this mains protective earth, just from a regular DC source, plus and minus. After you start up, you will see the main screen. And on the main screen, you have the set temperature, you have the actual temperature, the handle type, and X solder automatically detects the handle type for you. And uh, the current supported handles are NT115, T210, and T245 from JVC. Input voltage, in my case 24 volt, MCU temperature, and the source. And here the source has been detected to be DC. If I would power X holder from a USB power delivery source, it would detect that and say source USB there. You also have this bar graph, which shows the information about the current state. And if the state is in run mode, this bar graph shows the output power. And at the top of the output power bar graph, you see the max output power, in this case 65 watts. And why is 65 watts? That's because it has detected there is a T210 handle. That's why it's 65 watts max output power at the moment. You also have this encoder that you can use to switch between the different set temperatures uh, as you want. You also have two buttons, which is two different preset values. And by default, the two different presets are uh, 330 and 430 degrees Celsius. And this can be changed in the settings menu. And to start to heat up the soldering iron, you basically lift it from the stand and it will start to heat up and there it's up in temperature. And you can change between different temperatures, either with the encoder or with the different presets, 430 degrees, goes up to 430 degrees. And if you put the handle back in the cradle, it will go into standby mode. And standby mode means that it will go down to 150 degrees and stay there for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, it will go down to sleep mode and sleep mode there will basically shut off heating, so it will go down to room temperature. And if you lift the handle, it will start to heat up. And you can also pause and resume the heating by pressing the encoder button like this. And to go into the settings menu, you press down the encoder button while powering up like this. Then you get into the settings menu. 
And in the settings menu, you have startup temperature, temperature offset, standby temp and time, which is what I recently talked about, sleep time. Uh, sleep time is if you would by accident leave the soldering iron on the table, it will after 30 minutes by default go into sleep mode automatically. Uh, that's more of a safety feature. You have buzzer enable, preset temperature one and two, the two different buttons. GPIO 4 on at run. On the PCB there is an unpopulated header where you can connect, for example, a fume extractor. And this GPIO 4 is a low level output which goes high when the X solder is in run mode. So if you connect that to your fume extractor via a MOSFET, uh, you can have so that when you lift the handle and X solder goes into run mode, the fume extractor kicks on. And when you place the handle back in the cradle, the fume extractor stops, which could be quite nice. Screen rotation, you can rotate the screen. Limit power, if you would like to limit the power for some reason. Eye measurement uh, is the current measurement. So X holder can measure the current in the heating circuits. And by doing that, it can determine if there is a, a missing or faulty tip inserted in the handle. I will show that later. Startup beep, low default, save and reboot, exit no save. So if we take exit no save, and we lift the handle, and we uh, unconnect the tip, X holder will show three dashes in the actual temp, meaning that there is no tip connected at the moment. And if we put the tip back, it starts heating up. And stops. And I can show you the axolder portable. It's exactly the same. I still have the DC input connectors, but as I said, mostly I use it with a USB power delivery source. In this case, it's a USB-C power delivery. It's my cell phone charger, basically. And when I connect this, it will uh, automatically detect that the source is a USB source. Uh, and it will also show the max power. And the max power comes from the USB-C power delivery negotiation phase during startup. So the X holder knows the max power output of the source that you connected. In this case, it's a 65 watts charger. And if I connect the handle, it will show the actual temperature of the tip. And now this is a T245 handle from JVC with a quite big tip. So if I start to heat up, the heat up time will be quite slow now because we only have 65 watts from the USB source. But it will start to heat up to 330 degrees. And if we would connect this handle to the station version where we have 150 watts of power, this would obviously be much faster. But it heats up. And you can jump between different temperatures. Another nice feature is that you can upload new firmware via the USB connector at the Axolder. And to do that, the microcontroller has to be in DFU mode. And in uh, the current version of Axolder, to put the MCU in DFU mode, you press and hold the most right button, this one, while you start up Axolder. And by doing that, the MCU will go into DFU mode and you can upload the new firmware. And there is a guide on the GitHub page on how you do that. And I thought I would show you a little comparison between an original JBC station and the Axolder. So here I have the JBC DDE with the same T210 handle and the same tip. So if we start both stations, their axolder is ready, and the JPC we have to wait for. A little bit. There, it's ready. And if we lift both handles at the same time, yeah, their axolder is ready, and the JPC as well. They basically have the same heat up time. I think the JPC, if I'm not wrong, 
uh, is limiting the output power for the T210 handles to 60 watts, while the axe holder has a max output of 65 watts, but it's basically the same. And if we want to change the temperature, let's say we want 430 degrees because we have encountered some big ground plane or stubborn component. On the JBC, we have to press the button in order to notice that it can't go to 430 degrees. It rolls over to 200 degrees. Annoying. Okay, but let's take 400. Then we have to press OK and then it goes to 400 degrees. On the X solar, on the other hand, it's much easier. It's just a knob. You go to 430 degrees Celsius, or even better, you have a preset already, and you can super quick go between different temperatures. Yeah. And X solder solders, as you expect, of course, from a quality JBC station, or. Station. It's an X solder station, but it's still a JBC cartridge uh, and it has the same output power and functionality. No issues whatsoever. Nice. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, there is about a lot more information on the GitHub page and uh, there is also a Discord channel. So if you have any questions, you can ask them there and I will try to answer them. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Ciao.